Hey guys, it is Shelly here. I am here to do a new video. And some of you may think it's the Doherty Dozen, but you're wrong. It's not the Doherty Dozen. I know some people think I'm obsessed. Some think, people think I just always talk about the Doherty Dozen, aka Slushy Lushy. But today it's not about her. Today it's about this mad mama, aka Veronica. I don't know her last name. It's just fucking Veronica, okay? So we just know her as Veronica. So I recorded two lives, one being 4th of July and one being, I believe, a few days before 4th of July. I don't know what exact date they were. Now, I accidentally published the live that I'm getting ready to talk about on YouTube for a couple hours, I believe 35 or 36 people saw it. I apologize. That was a complete accident. I did not mean to do that. I uploaded it to YouTube. I was trying to make it private so that I could watch it from my computer because it was screen recorded on my phone. So I'm using YouTube to take it from my phone to my laptop. It got publicly published, so you guys may have already seen this. I'm very sorry. This was not something that I was trying to publish right now. Anyway, we are going to talk about her live. I honestly don't remember really anything about it. I was cooking dinner, and I saw that she was live, and so I started screen recording. I sat my phone down, started cooking dinner. I was listening to it in my headphones. But I don't remember anything that she said. So I'm literally basically watching it for the first time ever with you guys. So let's get to the video. I don't know if the comments are going to come up clear for you guys. On my phone, it was clear. I assure you it was clear. But um, on my laptop, they're kind of blurry. So maybe every once in a while, I'll just kind of read out some of the comments. So you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, one of the comments were, have the three girls kept up with the bedroom? Now, if you aren't a part of my Facebook group, go join it. You'll have fun, I promise. It's called Exposing Alicia from the Doherty Dozen and other YouTube families. But I shared a live uh, in there, I believe, a couple weeks ago. It, she was at the beach. She wasn't paying attention to her kids. Um, she was on live on TikTok with her fans. I had screen recorded most of it. Uh, I believe a couple of people were asking where the littler kids were. And she was like, oh, they're with their dad or something. They got in trouble. They trashed their room. People thought that was too harsh. So she updated with a TikTok with her trashed room. You can see those TikToks. I believe Amy Robinson on YouTube has a video about it. But, like, I have four children. They were toddlers once. They're all teens, preteens, you know, between the ages of 13 and 9. I remember when they were kids and they made messes. But the magnitude of the room was insane. And even, you know, having... I know she has lots of kids. But to me, this is my personal opinion. And you can like it or not. I don't care. But... You had to have left your children for a significant amount of time for the room to be that trash. And I believe she said it happened over the course of a few months. But then you fix those things. You, you punish your children. You teach them how to take care of stuff. But in the video, she showed them burning marshmallows. She said they burnt marshmallows into the furniture. And it was like a bookshelf or something. And there was, like, marshmallows burnt on it. And people are like, where did you get, like, where did your kids get a lighter or, you know, some type of burning, you know, item to burn a marshmallow into the furniture? And she's like, oh, they just put it in the microwave. And then they brought it to their room. And then they stuck it on the furniture. I have put peeps from Easter in the microwave. Me and my brother uh, did that as kids. And I don't remember any burn. Like, this was like, you know, that yellowy and black, like, you know, charred marks on these marshmallows. Um, I don't remember that happening to marshmallows, nor do I remember it happening to peeps. Usually in the microwave, they just blow up and get smushy and, like, gooey. Um, but when you put it over, like, a campfire, they get kind of black and burnt. This had those marks, like, as if somebody took a lighter and they put the marshmallow and, like, lit the marshmallow on fire. Now, I have no proof of this. She said it was in the microwave, but um, 
go stick a marshmallow in the microwave and tell me what it looks like because I don't remember it ever having black charred marks on the marshmallow. So take it with a grain of salt, but that's my opinion. I do need mods. The three girls bedroom was cleaned and immediately destroyed the same day. So thank you, Lisa. So clearly they didn't learn anything. So maybe you might want to, I don't know, like work on that, you know, maybe take some of their stuff away. I don't know. Hmm. Weird. Ooh, joining from the UK. Hey, do you happen to have any posh British guy friends who wear trench coats? Just saying. Single dads, you know? I'm just playing, I'm just playing. Now I know everybody needs a significant other, but she's, she has a lot going on. I know she's making a joke, but I think she needs to focus on a lot of other stuff in her life, like all of her children. A lot of, obviously, a lot of people ask me what I'm drinking when I drink these bottles. It's actually water, believe it or not. If you have ever heard the brand Ice, this is just the store brand of, like, flavored water. A couple of people ask me, what are you drinking? It's not, like, Kool-Aid or anything. It's literally ice water. Dinner tonight is literally just random whatever, leftovers, ramen, whatever people can get into and find. I'm not going to down her for that. We have days like that. We have days where I make family meals. There are days that we do a free-for-all where, you know, my kids are all old enough. They know how to work the air fryer. You know, they put, like, chicken nuggets or whatever in the air fryer. My older kids know how to make a pizza. So I'm not going to down her for that. I, I applaud her that her kids, you know, it's kind of like a... I don't want to say, like, offend for yourself. The younger kids, she kind of should monitor, make sure that they get, you know, help in the food that they need. But the older kids should be able to go into the pantry or whatever and make their own food. So that's something that is different than Lush. She kind of, you know, is teaching her kids how to just go and make their own food. And that's awesome. I applaud you, Veronica. When I date a man who doesn't have any kids, I feel like it would be weird. I would. Oh, thank you, Fallon. That's adorable. I would possibly but i would be wondering why he would want to date me you know what i mean i would be questioning his motives so i feel like it would take a lot for me to feel like i could trust him i commend her for that i don't really like her i'm not gonna lie but i i commend her for that because there are a lot of creepy men out there and I don't know if it's just because I watch a lot of crime podcasts and a crime, you know, shows and a lot of ID discovery, but there are creepy pedophiles and men who, who and maybe women, you know, and women too, who seek out single moms um, to date so that they have access to their minor children at home. In the comments, somebody's saying they don't have socials or birth certificates. I've heard people say this. I don't know about that. I can't confirm that. Um, I don't know how any kid can have no birth certificate or a social security number. I thought that was a requirement everywhere. Like, I didn't know that there are places that you can be like, no, I don't want a birth certificate. Or no, I don't want a social security card. So... I don't know how true that is, but to me, it was a foreign, like, situation. So, comment below if it it's some if it's a thing, because I didn't know it was a thing. Someone commented, she doesn't even do actual homeschool. This bugs me because I homeschool my children. This was before the pandemic. I, my kids, none of my kids have ever been to a public school and I'm not going to sit here and bore you with the reasons why some people think, you know, what, where are your kids at? You're not teaching them. It pisses me off because just because you don't see us moms teaching our kids doesn't mean that we're not teaching them. So I hate when people go, she doesn't actually homeschool. Like you don't know you're not in her house. Like get over yourself. Worked out. The kids are in the other room. Oh, they're in the other room. They're very quiet. So I'm curious to know what the quiet children are doing or what they're getting into. 
Someone just said, can uh, you tell one of them to come on live? So, this irritates me. So, she's on live, just her, and some random stranger is asking her to go get one of her children and bring them on live. Like, why do they want to see her children? That's a red flag. You should not be putting your kids on the internet. She's put her kids so much on the internet that strangers are requesting to see them. I would, like, fight somebody for, like, I want to see your daughter or bring your kids on. Like, that is weird. And, like, she's just like, mm, like, whatever. Like, that is a weird request. And as soon as I saw that, if I ever had, like, I'm not putting my kids online. But if I ever did that and someone was like, I want to see one of your kids, that would be it for me. I'd be done. I'd be like, nope, no, too much creeps, like too many like weirdos out there now that they're asking and requesting to see one of my children. It's really weird. Like, do better. Please do better. People are asking, do you have any kids who don't like to be on camera? Like... It's just really weird. Stop asking about children. It's about her right now. It's just her. Like, don't ask about kids. Who is on somebody's live asking some random stranger questions about her kids? They've asked about homeschool. Someone's asked about bring one of your kids on live. Now they're like, which one doesn't want to be on camera? Like, these are very invasive and personal fucking questions. And I think she should have shut it down right then and there. Do I have any kids who don't like to be on camera? Oh, it depends. Some days they want to be on camera and some days they don't want to be on camera. So it just depends on the day. Here's the same fucking question. Can you tell one of them to come on camera? Why does this person want one of the children to get onto the camera so bad? Like, not only once, but the person asked twice. Like, they want one of those kids to get on the camera now. You're not ordering me to do a fucking thing, first of all. But you sure as hell aren't going to order me to put any of my children on the goddamn camera. Like, how is that anyone's business? Does anyone see that this is weird? That uh, strangers and adults are like, get one of your kids on camera. I need to see them. Like... Make it make sense. This is not normal. You do not get online and have strangers request to see your kids. It's fucking weird. And even if she says she's not bringing them on, you have to think as a mom, maybe I should stop doing this because I have strangers requesting to see my children. Like, that's fucking weird. Like, stop. I'm not calling anyone on camera right now because then everyone's going to interrupt me and I was trying to work. Her reasoning is, everyone's going to interrupt me, and I'm trying to work. I'm trying to do my paintings. Now, I make cups. You all see it. I know maybe because the thing might be in the way. I make cups. but So, I, I get the whole artist thing. But maybe you could have, as mom said, no, I'm not bringing my kids on camera. Like, that's not your business. Like, not just, oh, no, they'll bother me. So, you're telling me. That you don't want to bring your kids on camera because they're going to bother you. Not, like, because it's no one's fucking business. Where your kids are, what they're doing. Like, it annoys the shit out of me. That she tries to please her fans over defending her children. I would be like, it's not your fucking business where my kids are. And no, I won't bring my kids on camera, you fucking weirdo. Like, don't be like, oh, I'm sorry. They're going to pester me. They're going to bother me. I'm not going to bring them to prance on camera. Like, please be a mom. Stand up for your kids. Stop pleasing your fans. They're not your job or responsibility. Take care of your children and stand up for them. Stop throwing them online. Someone said, did you not see the video from their rooms? That's the video I'm talking about. Amy Robinson made a video on it. If anyone wants to go on YouTube and search Amy Robinson, it's A-M-M-Y Robinson. 
um, she has it, and I'm not sure if this Mad Mama has that video on TikTok still, but I know Amy made a video about it. Someone's asking, like, did you not see it? Like, they, it was beyond trash. It was more trashed, I personally think, than any toddler or kid's room has ever been trashed. It was pure, again, this is all allegedly in speculation, that was out of pure neglect and just, you know, I don't know, being on your phone or, you know, making your artwork. Somebody didn't watch them kids for a good amount of time for them to burn marshmallows into the furniture. I thank you all for being here and being supportive, um, despite the haters always making up lies about me and my family. They're just mad because I'm friends with Alicia Doherty, and I don't know why they hate her, because she's always been nice to me. I personally think it's all for publicity. They're not besties. They're not confiding each other. It's all for the internet. And second of all, I don't know who's making up whatever rumors about you, but we just comment on what we fucking see. So if you don't want us to comment on your fucking life and the things that you do and your kids burning marshmallows into the fucking furniture and, you know, feeding your kids out of, you know, ravioli cans and shit. And your, what, electricity being cut off because you couldn't afford to turn it back on because you were relying on donations from the public and not actually working for a living. Maybe you should stop doing all that and posting videos because then maybe we wouldn't have a reason to make rumors up about you. Um, but yeah, I don't know any rumors. I just know people making comments from what they fucking see on your TikTok. So if you don't want people to see your life, maybe don't post your life, you know? You know, girl, like, don't post your life if you don't want people to comment on your life. Okay? I was going to do a time lapse. Whoops, I forgot about that. Oh, I don't think Mara's all that interested in college, but you never know. Andrew's going to have his license later this month. He's been driving a lot already. He just has to have, you know, a licensed driver in the car. He's got a permit. The final exams, that's the thing. I didn't get the results back yet, and Andrew and Adam both refused to take their tests, so I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Um, uh, Andrew could still take a different test. That depends on whether or not he wants to join the military. If he joins the military, they'll take that test. No, they don't need to take the SATs because they don't want to go to college. Do they allow them to take the test? Again, it's nobody's business. If your kids want to go to college or not, that's not the world's business. I know it's not private information, but it's it's private, but it's not private. And that's not anyone's business. Maybe they don't want the world to know if they're going to college or not. Like, I just, hmm, I just find it weird. Like, if my mom ever got on the camera and was like, my kids don't want to go to college. Like, that's weird. Stop. Stop telling people what your kids are or are not going to do, especially the minors. You don't know what they're going to do. You may think you know what they're going to do, but maybe they changed their mind. Maybe they don't want the world to know if they went to college or not. I know it's very, like, small fraction and detail, but that's not for you to tell millions of people. Well, I'm not perfect, and I just, I want to make that very clear, and I have dealt with a lot of mental health issues in the past. I finally have gotten to a place where I feel comfortable and stable and good, and I think it has a lot to do with the fact that I bought a house, and it makes me feel, like, successful. It makes me feel like I'm not, I don't know. It makes me feel like I'm not a complete failure, I guess. I don't know. I do sympathize with her on that. Yeah, I'm snarking on her. Yeah, she's not my favorite person in the world, but she's still a human. She's still a person. And mental health is a serious, you know, 
situation and I've struggled with, you know, I've said people like before, like agoraphobia, I, um, didn't have it my whole life. Like I was an outgoing person and I know a lot of you in the group have seen pictures of me as a teenager and I was much thinner and everything. Um, I was more outgoing as a teen and as I got older, I ended up, you know, having children and I was a stay at home mom and I ended up, um, gaining weight this past few years. And so I've struggled with that. And so I can relate to her, you know, from going from being an outgoing person to like being secluded at home all the time. So I kind of sympathize, you know, with the whole mental health, uh, aspect of everything. I don't want to change where I'm sitting. I don't like how the light is hitting my face. I don't like how the ring light hits my face. I have, um, on top of the other bullshit that I have, dyslexia and a bunch of other nonsense, um, I have psoriasis. So some days my face will be clear and some days it'll be blotchy. Um, and for some weird ass reason in my late twenties, I started getting gray hair. Like here, I look like I'm 50 and everyone in the group tells me I'm middle age. I'm 32, but everyone thinks I'm 50. It is what it is. The ring light brings the brightness, but it also brings out every flaw of my face. And I'm a big hot mess. And you get what you get. I'm not, I'm not putting in like, you know, tons of glam for this. This is just, that. this is just me. So I, I um, completely like relate to this whole ring light situation. <laughs> I appreciate all of you guys for sending the gifts. It really is nice. I do want to make it clear that we are not struggling anymore, uh, but I do appreciate the gifts. It makes me feel like loved, it makes me feel cared about. So I still like it. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, my eye is itchy. Maybe I should take a nap while I still have a babysitter, right? If you're not struggling anymore, then why not take the kids offline? Like, I get that she might want to be online. And like I said in the group, this is like therapy for me. I spread awareness about child exploitation. I'm doing my very best to not snark. I want to make it clear that I, the beginning of this and the beginning of the Facebook group, I let, you know, a YouTuber kind of influence me. I had watched their channel for a very long time and I was trying to be like them. You know what I mean? Like, cause I really looked up to them and I thought they were cool and I, you know, spent money on their merch and I subscribed to their, uh, YouTube channel. Like I paid money to see their YouTube channel and their Patreon and you all know I pushed this person's uh, videos and I shared all their shit. And even when some of my hard earned, you know, research and things that I had done were pulled from the group and put in videos for that person to make money, I was just like thankful that, uh, you know, they used my stuff, but they never wanted to advertise my group. They never wanted to personally call me out. And the longer that I watched their videos this year, like within the last few months, it, they were just very toxic and I wasn't laughing as much and it was all hate, hate, hate. And I believe that I started my Facebook group and my, you know, channel snarking hard. And I think that I lost sight of what I was originally doing. And so I am trying my very best to see uh, these vloggers as humans, but still push and advocate for children and call them out on their bullshit, but still remember that they are humans as well. 
but they're humans that are using their children for money and it's gross and it needs to stop. But I'm doing my very best to do a good balance of snark and education at the same time. I know. I just need like a really quick nap. Sometimes I feel really run down and I just need like a 15 minute nap to recharge because it's like my brain turns off and I can't think straight and I'm cranky. And then I'll like lay down and I can feel like this tingling in my brain, like it's literally powering down. And then all of a sudden I feel better, like it rebooted just a little bit. I mean, I'm always still tired. There's never, ever, ever a time that I'm not some bit of tired, but at least, you know, the nap makes it so that I feel like I'm not just going to crash, like fall over and, you know, have I thought about dyeing my hair? Kind of, but I would just want it to be a darker brown. I know I've got some grays poking in now. I don't mind them really, but I wanted to have, I don't know. Part of me actually likes my hair. Like brown reminds me of the trees, you know? And I used to think I was a tree spirit. So obviously when I comment, it's very hard for me to admit this, but she seems like a nice girl. She seems like maybe somebody that I would hang out with. But if she could just, like, stop putting her kids online. She said that she doesn't need the money. Okay? It's not my business. But if you say that and you truly don't need the money, then pull them offline. Like, you can still do this. Like, I'm doing this and you don't see my kids. I do my very best for you not to hear my kids, but you don't see them. And I've managed to make multiple videos without anyone knowing what they look like or anyone seeing them. Um, you can make content. And I think that a lot of people hate me because of the fact that they think that I'm just this big mean bully who doesn't like YouTube moms. And it's not that you can make content about your kids without ex disclosing their medical information, their private information, their schools, uh, without showing their faces. I'm going to try my best to make content sometimes like not YouTube videos, but maybe some shorts that center around me being a mom, but without showing my children. Maybe some of these moms need to see examples of what I'm talking about. Make cooking videos without your kids, you know, make, you know, outside content. Like I said, Chris, I made a great video uh, where she showed her and her son and her husband, like, you know, walking, you could see her son's feet. So you got the idea. You didn't need to see her son's face. Um, I think she was putting laundry away or something. And then you could see her kid, like her son was playing, you know, with, I, I want to say blocks or something. Forgive me if I'm wrong. So, some type of toy item, but you didn't see his face, but you, as a mom got the idea of what she was doing. You didn't need to see the kid's face. So I think that we could, you know, as moms make content that didn't show their kids and, and are not exploiting their kids. So maybe if we can get these YouTube moms and TikTok moms to pivot their content away from their children, like that's what at the end of the day, what we all want. We don't want these moms to stop making content or get off the Internet. We're just saying stop filming your children. So maybe some of us and YouTubers and maybe people in the group, maybe we can start like making content that shows examples of what we're talking about because I don't hate people. I just hate when people use their kids for money. And sometimes I come off aggressive, but I'm not a nasty person. I'm not a mean person. And so it, it does not get to me, but it's annoying that people are like, Oh, you're so mean. You're this big fat bully. And I'm not, I'm just maybe not explaining or expressing it the right way. I'm doing my best to not come off as nasty. And I think because I'm an admin in the big snark group, I get heat from everyone in that group, which I love my members and I will stick up for all of my members. But I think some of the influencers see some of the comments and then they just like put my name on blast and they're like, this is the lady who runs it. 
I'm not responsible for everybody in that group, nor am I responsible for everyone's comments. And again, I'm one person with almost 60 people, and I have a small business and four children and a life, and I'm not always in that group. I do not, unless somebody tags me, I don't follow every thread with 300 comments. I'm not reading all those comments. So sometimes things get past me and I don't see them. So maybe as, you know, content creators, maybe we can show more examples of mommy, like to mommy vloggers, what we're talking about when we say you can sh make content without exploiting your kids. Because that, again, at the end of the day, that's all we want. We just want you guys to respect your children and we care about minors and we care about the children because at the end of the day that's what we're all doing is advocating for kids when i was a kid i got bullied a lot and i didn't know what to do because they weren't just regular bullies they wanted to like you know kill me and stuff so i learned how to run really fast but you know you can't run forever so i learned how to climb trees and i would always climb much higher than anyone else was willing to go and it always surprised me why is it that I can climb the best, but it makes sense now because I was climbing for my life <laughs> and they were climbing just to chase me. It wasn't worth it for them. Oh yeah, that would be kind of funny, a video where we pick each other outfits. It's okay now. I mean, obviously I don't live in that neighborhood anymore. I'm not living in fear, but I did have a pretty awful childhood and I would never want to go back there. I would never want to relive my childhood. It was very awful, scary, living in constant fear kind of, kind of thing, you know? And there's people who had it worse, I'm sure very much worse, but it just, for me, um, it was mostly that I didn't even have anybody protecting me or like anyone I could go to or talk to or give me advice really my sister would try to give me advice but her advice was like to try to blend in which I couldn't do like she would try to do my hair sometimes or you know let me wear her shoes but I had bigger feet than her even though she was older I had therapy actually and I quit because I was 16 and the therapist asked to see the bra I was wearing and I thought that was really inappropriate and I didn't want to I didn't want to be there ever again, so. First of all, Veronica, I'm sorry that you had to go through that. I truly am. Snark or not, no one should have to go through that. Um, in elementary school, I was kind of picked on a little bit. You know, people called me Smelly Shelly because it rhymed with my name. And as many of you know, my maiden name is Bowling, B-O-W-L-I-N-G. And so even though I wasn't fat as a kid, um, people just called me Shelly Bowling Ball or Shelly Big Fat Bowling Ball. So in elementary school, I was bullied a lot. In middle school, I got really dark and I got gothic with a lip ring and black hair with red streaks and chains on my pants and, you know, listen to Bullet for My Valentine and Hawthorne Heights. No one really messed with me because I was weird at like around middle school and high school. I was very girly and preppy and watched Laguna Beach and, you know, um, the hills and was, you know, very girly. And by the time I reached high school, I didn't have any bullies or enemies or anything, but, um, you know, being bullied is hard, not only as a child, but as an adult. I mean, I get it every day. And I'm very shocked that I've been able to like, ignore it because I get it from TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, you know, YouTube. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I get the hate. And when I go to bed, I get the hate. I get the hate all day long. So I mean, it really sucks. But I don't let it bother me. I live my best life and I do what I want to do and no one's going to bully me or blackmail me or pull out whatever case search or whatever bullshit they find out about me. I don't really give a shit. But as a kid, it's really hard to kind of turn away and just ignore it. So I'm sorry you had to deal with that. And whatever fucking therapist that she had that wanted to see her bra, you can go fuck yourself. That is disgusting and, like, very unethical. And I'm sorry, Veronica, that you had to deal with that. That's disgusting. Um, like I said, we're snarking. I'm not her best friend. I'm not saying that I like everything she did. But I, I'm a human. She's a fucking human. And I'm going to point out, 
you know, some of the things that I find, you know, that I can sympathize with. And I'm going to try to pivot my channel is to not hate, 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 hate. I'm going to do my best to give constructive criticism. We're still going to snark. We're still going to be funny. But when it comes to trauma and stuff, I'm not making fun of that. I'm not going to exploit it. And I'm not going to make a joke out of it. Um, well, yeah, but it, I, it, here's the thing. I'm not worried about kids bullying them. I'm worried about adults bullying them. Most kids, for example, that come to my page, most of the kids think we're great. It's the adults that, you know, are constantly attacking us and harassing us, which is really strange to me. Adults get, like, obsessive. I don't know. I mean, I guess kids can too, but I'm not as worried about kids. The grandbaby is good. Veronica, the way that you're going to be able to try to alleviate and monitor the bullying from adults with your children. First of all, no fucking adult should be bullying a child. Even I, at my darkest days of snarking, never, ever made fun of a child. But there are going to be some nasty ass trolls. And the advice that I can give you is get your kids off your channel. Stop filming them. I'm not saying that what she's doing with her kids is right all the time. But the only way I can explain to you and tell you for you not to be judged as much is to not film your children. If you don't film them and if you don't make videos with them in it, nobody can make fun of you. I'm not a perfect mom. But again, nobody sees my children. And if I ma started making videos with my kids, first of all, I'd be a hypocrite. And like, who would do that? And who would film their kids for money? And who would, you know, make content with children in it? But second of all, you know how many people would pick that shit apart? Like, I'm not going to open myself up to that. I'm not opening my kids up to that. So if nobody sees it, nobody will say anything. So... Don't make videos with your kids. Make your artwork. You know, I know some people snark on her art. I'm not good at art. My husband, like, majored in art. His high school was a magnet high school for, you know, all, like, the arts, like, dance and photography and art and all that. Like, it was an all-magnet high school. He majored in that. Um, I draw stick people. So, I still, I, she draws better than me. But focus on your art and you and, you know, cooking and stuff. But, like, don't put your kids in it because you're now just setting your kids up to be made fun of. I'm going to make sure that my kids don't get made fun of. I'm not going to put them in a position to even get made fun of or to have their images shared or to be exploited. So... From person to person, woman to woman, you know, mom to mom... Get the kids off your channel. Stop filming them and you won't have to worry about adults or children or anyone making fun of your kids. Uh, yeah, I'm still friends with Alicia. She's a really good friend. Love her. She's great. Okay, bye. So this did not really have any snark at all. This was more about being serious um, I'm doing my best, like I said, to not snark as much, but to try to give constructive criticism, but we can't always be serious. I, I can't, I can't handle like sadness and seriousness all the time. You know, it's, it's not fun to sit here and watch abuse and trauma and seriousness all the time, you know? So Am I going to make fun of things? Yes. Am I going to do my very best to not make fun of people's appearances? Yes. Um, I'm not limiting myself to making fun of Lush's cooking. Um, sometimes I make comments about White Claw. Um, Josh calling him, you know, D Sniffer 2000. Um, we're still going to, I'm still going to be the same channel. I'm still going to be, you know, making funny jokes. But I'm going to do my best to try to give these YouTubers constructive criticism. This way I know that if they still ignore it, they truly don't give a shit about anything but making money. I'm not out here to bully or harass them or be mean to them. 
I'm going to do some funny snarking, but also try to, you know, give criticism and like constructive criticism and try my best to spread the, you know, dangers and awareness of child exploitation without seeming like I'm being an asshole, if that makes sense. So the next video is going to be um, Mad Mama's 4th of July video. Uh, I do remember a little bit of that from what I remember. It, I have some funny snark and some funny comments. You're going to get that funny, you know, funny jokes. This one was just a little bit more serious. So um, next video will be a little bit more funnier. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, share the video. Um, again, thank you so much. If you made it this far, you're freaking amazing. I'm sorry. I'll never ever be able to make a short video. It doesn't seem. Thanks, guys.